additional intro information? I think you touched on it. I mean, uh, I was able to uh, be called onto the film uh, by actually a good friend of mine, Rich Rutherford, and then Robert Nagel, who was the stunt coordinator for the movie Ford versus Ferrari. Uh, one of three sons who actually got to be in the movie from that era, Alex Gurney, of course, played his dad, Dan Gurney. Um, I actually didn't play my dad in the movie. Um, I got to drive his car. I did all the scenes. Um, Tanner Faust was actually already um, picked as the actor for my dad to play Ronnie Buckham. So whenever we worked together, it was a father-son day working together. It's just kind of a joke there, but we, uh, it was pretty fun. And then uh, Derek Hill uh, was the other son of Phil Hill, who was in the movie. So three of us got to do a majority of the stunt driving in the movie. All of us um, sons have uh, racing backgrounds as well. For my, I've actually raced Le Mans in, uh, in 2003, and also raced Indy cars and sports cars all over the world for 20 years. So I'm retired now. But this was my first uh, film that I had ever done. I'd done a few commercials and things like that, but nothing at, on this kind of scale. So that's a little bit about uh, you know how I got involved with it and got to do the, the filming. As I said, not only did I drive the scenes with my dad's car, which was really sort of a few uh, things at the end of the movie, um, because his wasn't the main focus as Ken Miles' car was, um, uh, but uh, we drove all the cars from some of these um, replica cars that are out here, these Porsche long tails and the Ferraris and other GT40s, we all, we all mixed and matched and drove the cars. So, but any questions? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I'm really curious because you know, these were really fast cars, so when did you uh, realize you needed that speed? <laughs> uh, yeah, it came a little later for me. I mean, with my father racing, um, I was born in 1966, so the year that all this happened, um, and I, as I grew up, my dad was already retired from racing, so we, he moved our family up to Pismo Beach in California. I grew up as just a young surfing blonde haired kid uh, and uh, did that, actually surfed professionally right out of high school for a few years and then um, ended up, I actually, I, I, broke, I broke my ankle surfing and so I was out of the water for a year and I realized at that time you know, that uh, surfing probably has a limited career as far as uh, going into adulthood. And I thought, I asked my dad, I said, you know, racing sounds like a, a pretty cool thing to do. So it was just one of those, yeah, I was very competitive. And so I was in my early 20s um, when I decided my dad was in ill health at that time, but he helped me get started um, racing go-karts at first and then into uh, a racing school, the Skip Barber uh, Racing School. And that, that started things. And then even after his passing, I had plenty of help from uh, guys like Dan Gurney um, and uh, uh, Phil Hill and different guys like that to help direct me uh, into my racing career. Were you driving any of the, how were the car mount, the camera mounts? Because I mean, some of those angles are just yeah. amazing. So were you driving with camera mounts on the car? Or how did that work? So there was just a select few that ended up driving with some of the camera cars. Mm -hmm. um, Tony Hunt was the uh, stunt double for Ken Miles, um, Christian Bale. Mm -hmm. So he did a lot of car, car with the cameras on it and things. Um, a lot of the uh, shots were actually done by an actual camera car. It was called a Frankenstein. So it was the, yeah, it had cameras going out at every angle. So it would, like when we do a scene, say with like four cars, it would, we'd have to do that scene like five times, even when we got it, because it would change spots. So let, let's say I was here, it was here. Mm -hmm. And the next time we did it, I would just vanish and the, the camera car would be there. So it could see forward and then it would, we do it again, copy the whole scene and it would jump over here into this spot and then it would look back, right? So the, the camera car was always taking a spot at, at, mm -hmm. at certain times. And that was driven by Alan Pendelford uh, or Robert Nagel, those guys were, they, they built cars that for, for this kind of stuff for all kinds of movies that have never been built before. They, they have the concept cars for this. So, so in order to do that, mm -hmm. did you have like a playbook, like on a football field, so yep. you knew precisely where everybody yep. had to be at a precise place on the Yeah, yeah, which was, track, which was yeah. just suggestive at, at first. They would give us a, a whole playbook of everything that was gonna happen. Say we'd go to like Road Atlanta is one of the places we, we shot uh, with the Dunlop Bridge. 
and we'd have all these things, you know, what we were gonna do. Um, but you just pretty much woke up in the morning and waited until the directors figured out what they actually wanted to do. So you really could almost take that thing and throw it out the window. Um, because, you know, weather conditions may change and different angles and different parts of the day. So the great, the great thing about that is Robert Nagel, who was really, he was the stunt coordinator and he has a racing background as well. He was our, in our earpieces, he was the man. So anytime, because we'd hear directors from, you know, Mangold and, and another guy named Adam, who was his assistant director, unless Robert Nagel told us to action, action, go, we didn't move because of the danger of it all and things like that. So it was very clear to us when to actually make things happen. Which tracks did you shoot on throughout the movie? So we went to Willow Springs first um, to shoot the before, you know, the years before. Um, and that was actually by far the funnest thing we did because we literally got to drive everything from old Porsche Speedsters to co Corbra, uh, Cobras, Corvettes, at the pace that they could literally go at. Like we were, we were throwing these cars around and sliding them through the corners about as fast as they would go um, in the middle of the summer. So they were overheating and stuff. So we had to get about three laps before they'd start to overheat. But we were having a ball. Like it was super, super fun. A lot of the other stuff was more staged. Um, once we brought the TT40s in and things, and they were higher speeds. So then we went to uh, Road Atlanta um, in Georgia. Um, we went to a place called Savannah. Um, was a racetrack for a little while, but it's not an active racetrack anymore. Um, they use it for certain things. But uh, And then uh, we went to California Speedway, which replicated the Daytona Speedway. Mm -hmm. And then we, while we were in Georgia, they uh, they blocked off a six mile long stretch of highway to uh, simulate the Molson Strait. Mm -hmm. And so it was literally um, probably one of the more scary things we did because there were no guardrails. Um, and they were, this is the highest rate of speed. We're doing like 150 some odd miles an hour, okay. swapping wow. positions. And anything that was done at night in the real race, it was raining almost the whole night in 1960. So anytime we would do stuff, they would have sprinklers that we'd have to go from dry stuff at night through sprinklers where we'd start to hydroplane and then back out onto dry um, stuff. So that was a little unnerving. Um, and these cars, although really good cars, they're not actual race cars with all the safety things. So, um, you know. This is where Robert Negley, I'll mention him a lot, the stunt coordinator, he made sure we had everything from even the right tires. He wouldn't let us shoot something unless we had tires that didn't hydroplane and things. He was amazing. Uh, I have a question. So yeah. um, uh, it's kind of tied to the question before. Yeah. Uh, so how fast were those movie cars like actually going? Is there like, um, like some movie magic make it look faster or is the actual speed that it's going? Uh, on some of the small, uh, short, uh, sorry, some of the, at Savannah we did the um, corner like Arnage, which mm -hmm. is a very slow corner at mm -hmm. Le Mans. Mm -hmm. um, it, and it's in real life it, it is slow. So, we, you know, they, in the movie, they did speed that up a little bit. Okay. What's funny is we were just, we went to Daytona three weeks ago to do another premiere, um, the 24 hours of Daytona. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had my fiance back there and she, she, I was asking her how fast she thought the cars were going on the front straightaway. Mm -hmm. And watching a car go by at 190 miles an hour looks like 100, maybe 100. Oh, okay. So what I'm telling you is like at our highest rates of speeds were probably at the California Speedway. And we were probably hitting, uh, again, I don't know, maybe 100. 50, 160, okay. it looks like you're going 70. So okay. they, you know, from a distance, it just doesn't look impressive mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. until you're sitting in the car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It feels fast when you hit the wall, I'm just telling you that. So <laughs> that's, when really, yeah. that's when it really feels like. We didn't have that happen in the movie, but I've had that happen in racing. So um, don't know if I kind of really answer your question, because we're, we're doing, you know, in road course racing, which this is what this is, this isn't just ovals at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're talking about, you know, your highest speeds were always on straightaways. So Arnage and at Le Mans, I mean, they were in the real day, they were 66, even way back before all the technology we have today, they were still hitting over 200 miles an hour back in those days. Mm -hmm. Pretty scary without the cars being nearly as safe as they are today. It must help to come from that background. Was that kind of the basic idea for 
all the stunt drivers with us? Uh, for sure, especially with Robert Nagel. I mean, he's um, uh, early in his years he raced, and he knew bringing on. I mean, you had guys like Paul Dollenbach. Um, uh, so Wally Dollenbach is his dad. Uh, you guys may not know some of these names, but they're they're uh, historic in racing. Um, you know, Phil Hill, of course, the uh, 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 American uh, Grand Prix or Formula One world champion, um, and then so Derek Hill, his son, Alex Gurney, of course, Dan Gurney's son. And then all the other guys, you got Rich Rutherford, Kelly Collins, John Capps, um, uh, and Tanner Faust. Uh, these guys are dear to my heart as far as friends and racing drivers. And so they were the guys, because when you are doing scenes where we, they had us bumping cars at over 100 miles an hour and getting making it so the cars would slide and things. And you don't want to do that with just you know, guys that like cars. Um, you have to do it with guys that can actually manipulate cars at their, their finest. What are some things that you think people should know just about the profession of racing or, or some misconceptions that you run into? Um, I think, and I do a lot of things with helping drivers even in their careers and, and people that want to get into it. Um, I, I think the, the most interesting thing about that is, you know, especially in America, we all drive cars, right? Mm -hmm. So, and then I've done it all the time. I ask groups of people, you know, how many people in like this room think they're above average and almost everybody says they think they are well, only half of you be above average in this room, right? So it's it's understanding the difference between it being a good driver, let's say when we drive on the streets, we're driving at about 40% of the car's ability, honestly, I'm just telling you. So it's that 60% that we don't, that window we rarely get into and just truly understanding what it is to, it's a, it's a laws of physics, vehicle dynamic, um, traction of tires and how to do that. Just because a tire slides does not mean you're out of control. I mean, maybe someone else is, but a professional driver is not out of control as the car slides. Um, and that's the one thing that we are super, super good at is keeping it right in that window of adhesion and just slightly going over that. So it's, I, I, I guess that what I would love people to know is that we're not crazy. <laughs> we're just trained and, and, it, and that's what it is. It's a learned skill. A decent guitarist, but how do you get amazing? Training. Yeah. Same with driving. Mm -hmm. So, have you ever driven one of the open road races in the U.S., the Silver State Classic or the Big Bad Open Road Race? I haven't. That would be something fun to do for sure. Yeah. It is pure fun. Yeah, yeah. And the people who do it are out there to drive fast and have fun yeah. legally. Yeah. So. Yeah, I uh, was just telling my fiance now that I'm retired from racing, you know, this, even doing stuff like this. As I now that I'm in my older years and uh, entering them, uh, uh, doing more of those kinds of things, um, you know, is something I absolutely want to be involved with. So stunt work on films, is that out there? Yeah, I, I, it's a really uh, as even with all my friends who are like the, all the guys that almost ninety percent of the movies have done from Fast and Furious to every commercial are my good friends, and even those guys won't help me out get into the business um, because it's a very small niche. A few of them will throw me a bone here and there to do a few things, so I, uh, ultimately, I, I don't want to recreate a career. Um, I do, I, if I could do a movie or some commercials maybe once a year would be just fine for me. I, I, I enjoy my, my time, you know, on doing the things I love. Mainly, and, and that just my son Spencer Bucknam, who is a uh, third generation driver now. Of course, my dad Ronnie um, uh, did Le Mans, but he also raced the Indy 500. I raced Le Mans and the Indy 500, and my son Spencer now. So uh, he's 20, and he's at the starting the ladder system to race the Indy 500 and hopefully Le Mans as well. Well, what's cool about the movie is, as a non-car enthusiast, yeah. you don't realize, yes, there's mechanics, but yeah. they, they talk about the engineering. Yes. And that's kind of cool that most people probably don't know. I mean, like myself, I didn't yeah. really think about it. It's kind of like NASA. They're talking about, you know. Well, and that, and that was the era that had that much engineering. Really, it was creativity, mm -hmm. um, obviously engineering. But back then, rule books were only maybe an inch big. And because mm -hmm. they didn't even know things like if you put a wing on a car, it could actually make it stick and be better, or having a wider tire that you know had more rubber on it could actually make the car mechanic have mechanical grip. Um, having you know larger brake systems and different things that they were 
continually coming up with all the time, making the cars lighter, lower uh, for better aerodynamics. So that was an era where, like, I would say, every weekend at a race, somebody had built something in a garage like we have out here, and show up, and they'd be like, "What did you just build?" And they had, you know, it was it was, it was a, must have been a great time. Um, you know, the downside was the the danger of it, right? They didn't, the safety wasn't. So, like when I raced the Indy 500 or raced at Le Mans, I mean, I've ne I never broke a bone in 20 years of racing. Um, never, I've rolled cars, I've crashed them, just hop right out and everything's good. Um, so, safety in my era was much, much better. But our creativity um, was not so much because they would actually make rule books to not allow all the things that are um, capable on cars anymore. Mainly because the computer system kicked in and they had active suspension and active um, traction control and all these things which they you know, don't allow so that the driver is still uh, mainly the, the, the one that's controlling the, the car itself. So you said that's how it is now? Yeah. I mean, they had some different classes of cars and things will allow certain things, um, but for the most part, um, like active suspension for a little while in Formula One was allowed in some sports car racing. And it just got to the point where, uh, you know, all you needed was a glitch in the computer and the car would just go creaming off. So they've outlawed some of that stuff. They still have traction control, ABS brakes, things like that. But most of the um, active things that um, are controlled by computers, they, they try not to have be in some of the rules. Yeah. Um, what's your daily driver? So I have a Honda Accord. <laughs> it's great gas money. Plus, I find that you know, I get less tickets with that than you know, a GT40 or something like that. How many cars do you have? I have one. I am not. Just one. You know what's funny? I am like the least car guy you'll ever meet. Um, I, love, I drive cars, and I love the art of driving and racing anything. But once I sit in the car and I'm behind the steering wheel, what's outside of me? I my job is to learn what that car's. Um, can you like learn its behaviors and how to make that vehicle? I don't care what it is, it could be a minivan, uh, or but of course, race cars they come in all shapes, sizes, and forms, and they have different horsepower, they have different cornering ability, and that's always been my passion is the driving. So, I, I'm a I, I don't it, what's fun, I love cars, like, I love this but I love that someone else maintains them and, <laughs> uh, and houses them and worries about them. And it, it's a blessing to my heart, you know, but yeah. as far as for me to do that, I love, I love to be very light and nimble and just kind of go and see these things. So yeah, I'm not, not a huge car guy to, for myself. Yeah, but I, I love that people are. You've been spoiled. <laughs> I had a neighbor once who flew Spitfires in World War II. Yeah. And I said, how come you're not flying anymore? He said, well, after flying Spitfires, yeah, that's uh, correct. Everything was downhill. It, yeah, Couldn't do it. It is funny. Yeah. So you know, and that's why, like, you know, of course, we're here talking about the GT40s and, and the sports cars. But um, you know, the only thing faster and better um, built race car than an Indy car is a Formula One car, which mm -hmm. is just a slightly better car. But I mean, which people don't understand, especially America. I mean, NASCAR, I mean, those are taxi cabs, so they're, they're not super fast. They're really not. They're compared to like the Indy 500, where our average speed is about 230 miles an hour, 240. Um, and, you know, a, a NASCAR can do maybe 190 or something like that, which is still fast, don't get me wrong. But, I mean, compared to like having a fighter jet or a prop plane, a um, fighter jet is a little better. <laughs> we have time for one more so, question. Um, so, during uh, the filming of the movie, uh, yeah. what are your like most memorable? moments or funny moments um i mean we oh man I, yeah you could go you could write a book on this stuff mainly yeah. because a lot of the stunt drivers are just characters um mm -hmm. you know and we had a lot of downtime i mean there would be some days we'd do one shoot but then we had other days where we'd shoot all day long um, um that was great but i will kind of refer back to what i answered over here on the willow springs um the the, the racing filming we got to do in those cars mm -hmm was so fun, um, you know, doing our maneuvers. They kind of left it as an open book in that one where it wasn't quite of a playbook. They just wanted good shots of the car sliding and going around. So, so one time we really just had just a, an open interpretation of whatever we wanted to do. And it was, we were just having fun at the top speeds of whatever these cars could do. Um, and so that was the funnest thing at Willow Springs for sure.
Thank you all. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.